All right, guys, it's time to check out the greenhouse. Ow! I have to keep this bucket here because the doors swing open. There's a lot of issues with the greenhouse, guys, so let's just kind of go through and do a little walk around vlog and talk about what's going on. And would you look at that? I did not notice that. That is terrifying. I apologize for not getting this video out to you a lot sooner. We're gonna cover, you know, winterizing the greenhouse or at least what my theory is for this year. But I also never meant for pawn season two to kind of end so abruptly and out of nowhere. I, I just kind of got to a point where there wasn't a lot more that I really wanted to do with the space. I didn't want to keep adding fish. I didn't want to, I don't know, I just wanted to enjoy it. But I know a lot of you really love this space and you want to hear about what I'm going to be doing to keep things alive this winter. So let's talk about it. If you followed along with Pond Season 2, you'll notice right off the bat we have less plants in here. The coleus that were growing massive over here on the right and the left side, I ended up taking those out because they just, I mean, they were producing seeds and they were going to be all over the place. So pulled them out. They did really well this year. The Baby Tears is also still doing really good, even though it's a lot cooler in here and the palms are still alive which is awesome but not everything is doing great you can kind of see back there that I, I don't remember what the plant was but that thing totally died off one of our pond plants I think it was the chameleon plant that thing died off I need to get in here and do some work actually guys this whole area is looking really really crazy but at first glance you look around here and most things are alive and, and doing pretty okay despite the fact that the temperature is really starting to drop and I think that's probably the most important thing that's the questions that most people have is you know what do you do in the winter because it gets so cold so let's talk about it I live in the Pacific Northwest so we don't have super bad winters here it might be freezing or below freezing like mid 20s for like a week out of the year. Some winters are worse than others, but you kind of get the idea that it's it's not super cold here. We don't get below freezing, and that makes me in this whole greenhouse really lucky because when it does get that cold, then you have a lot more problems, obviously. So today is, I don't know, November 4th, 5th, something like that. The temperature outside is saying it's 52, but that's not really accurate. According to my phone, it is 45 degrees outside, but this probe is sitting inside. So according to this over here by the wall, which is a little bit cooler, it says it's 52. So we're about six degrees warmer here in the greenhouse. So give or take, plus or minus two, three, four degrees maybe, who knows. As far as all the terrestrial stuff in here, I'm gonna just let the winter be the winter and whatever happens in here happens. I'm not really too worried about it, we can replant things. What we are really concerned about though is the pond and the temperature of the water. As you can see, we always deal with glare issues in here guys, but you can see Chris, the big old goldfish, he's doing good. You can see the um, the minnows are, are all still doing really well, and the cherry barbs, you can see the little hits of water, but you don't see a fish. Those are the cherry barbs. They are pretty much impossible to see on camera. I was out here the other day, and I did notice some baby fish, guys. I don't know what fish they are. They could be minnows, they could be cherry barbs, I don't know, but they are in here somewhere. Hopefully we notice some here eventually, and we can key those out for you. Heating this space in the winter was obviously the number one concern. Throughout the whole summer, I had no idea how I was gonna do it. I loosely had a few ideas, but it was really just gonna be a trial and error process to see what was gonna work. Idea number one was to get one of those radiator style space heaters and have that plugged into our temperature sensor. And so obviously that would heat the greenhouse, but then the problem comes with how do you prevent that hot air from escaping? This greenhouse is not sealed really in any way, all right? There's points all over the place where hot air is gonna leak out and it's just gonna be a huge, huge power suck and probably not be the best way to do it. Obviously, I could work on sealing this greenhouse, but as far as doing that, I mean, polyurethane foam filling all the cracks on this thing, and maybe that wouldn't even work. We also have areas like the door where there's obvious cracks that we can't seal. We have to get creative and use like some gaskets, you know, little rubber lining and do that whole thing. Not impossible, but a lot of work. And the end result is we're heating up this space to A, keep the plants happy, but then also to passively heat the pond. And I just didn't think that that was gonna be an economical way to do it. There's a lot of what ifs in that method, and so I decided to just say, 
the heck with the air in here. Let's just heat the pond. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that our goldfish and our minnows, they can take super cold temperatures. This water can be 40 degrees and they're going to be fine. As long as we don't have this whole pond frozen over, they're probably going to survive for next season. The cherry barbs, however, aren't going to do as well if the water gets that cold, all right? In the beginning, before we had the heater in here, which I'll talk about in a second, um, the water got very, very cold. I think it was 40, upper 30s when we had a little bit of a cold spell, but the cherry barbs all made it. So that leads me to what we're doing here, guys. We just have a 300 watt heater in this 125 gallon pond in this open space, and it seems to be working so far. If we look over here at our thermometer, our not so super accurate digital one, but we can trust this, you know, within two to three degrees. It's looking like we're at about 70, 71 degrees Fahrenheit. And it took like three days for this water to get up to this temperature. I put this thing out here when we were gonna have a couple low nights in the low 30s and I was like, oh man, we gotta, we gotta do something for our fish here. And so I came out, put it in, and it wasn't until a few days later that the temperature was actually up at around 70. So it's 70 now on a 45 degree day in the middle of the day where it's looking like it's about 55 degrees in here in the greenhouse even though it does feel a little bit warmer it could be 60 right now it would be awesome if this pond could stay 70 for the entire winter i just don't think that's going to happen you know realistically when we have nights that get down to the mid 20s and you know weeks like that in december and january i don't know what the temperature of the pond is going to be if we can just keep this thing at like 60 degrees or even in the upper 50s i think everybody's going to be okay water holds temperature pretty well but when you're in a situation where you have a lot of surface area here it's just gonna lose that temperature that much faster and even right now with the temperature swing going into the night it's only a few degrees so I'm not super worried about things right now which when that temperature decides to drop another 20 degrees outside what's gonna happen in here if things do get bad I think there is a backup plan that I have that might work pretty well and that is basically create a greenhouse inside of the greenhouse so what we can do is we can build a structure that has clear plastic over the top of it seal up really well and we can put that dome over the pond still heat the water but then have that heat get trapped in the greenhouse inside the greenhouse and then hopefully hold that temperature a little bit better so I don't know I mean we're playing everything by ear guys and so far so good we haven't had any big fish deaths or anything as a result of the temperature swings and now that we have the pond at 70 degrees in here I think as long as we could keep it there I think we'll be okay. It took me a while guys, but I finally saw some of the baby fish down towards the bottom and I managed to net one of them up for you guys to check out, okay? So upon inspection, let's see if we can see this guy. Gonna be tough to see here. He's bouncing around. This is definitely not a cherry barb baby and this guy's been in here for a while, probably a few months old. I did see some smaller babies a few days ago and they could be cherry barbs, I don't know. This fish is still really young but just based on the colors I can tell it's one of the golden white cloud minnows. The baby cherry barbs, if they're in here, are gonna be even more impossible to see just because of their coloration. Golden white clouds, they're super easy to see. I think that's why they're probably my top recommendation for pond fish guys just because you can be super far away from your pond and still see them cherry barbs and probably a lot of other you know more common tropical freshwater fish are not going to be easy to see from above with the exception of goldfish of course you're going to be able to spot them from a mile away where'd chris go i just saw him he's he's hiding underneath that sylvinia but you guys get the point we're only going to have him out of the water here for just a second guys but you can definitely tell now that that's a baby golden white cloud. Just awesome. We'll go ahead and put him back now. He wants to get back in that warm water. And I'm hoping that there's a lot more where that came from, guys. We didn't get these fish to breed last year. Um, if you guys have been following along for a long time and you knew that we had these fish in a small patio pond that was at my old place, we didn't get them to breed last year. But I'm super stoked to at least you know know that there's a couple babies in here. That's a good sign. Hopefully, we come out here in the spring and get into pond season three, and we just have a ton more of those golden white clouds. I love these fish. Hey, Chris, what's up? You want a pet? You want a pet? No? Okay. All right. Since we've added the heater, we have had a lot more evaporation. You guys can see we are definitely probably needing to fill this thing up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm sure this video has been long enough. That is an update for you on the pond and the fish. We didn't end up seeing the babies. 
I hope they're okay. Um, maybe they're just hiding out. Maybe they didn't make it. I don't know. I'll be sure to keep you guys updated. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in seeing the creation of this greenhouse and see this pond at all the different stages, there will be a link for the playlist at the top of the description. Thank you so much again for watching, and we'll see you next time.